to it. And use your final project. Well, look, I finished it. Um, uh, yeah, it's not going to like really fly. You're going to have to, um, the goal of the class, you're going to have to develop into these designers of physical um, and biological interaction. Um, and like I said before, you're going to have to kind of defend your design choices. Um, so there's going to be lots of constructive criticism. And I will want you guys to be very constructively critical with each other, too. Um, we're all going to be super friends, um, but make sure that you also are always comfortable being like um, Alexander. Um, Alexander, you're like, Eric, I don't think um, your millipede with an Arduino on top of it is really harnessing all the affordances of digital media here. Uh, and maybe you could offer some uh, advice, like maybe you could hook sensors up to the Arduino. Maybe you can start by even powering the Arduino so it does something. Um, so you guys are going to be very critical of each other. Um, I'm going to don't freak out if I grade you hard. Um, that's just going to be kind of how the course goes. Um, uh, we're going to push you, and you all you all do well as long as you you know work uh, at it and are engaged. The main thing is to be like participative, participative, and engaged with the class. Um, this isn't going to be like uh, like when I took like physics back when I was an engineering undergrad. Um, you could there's a big lecture hall, right? Uh, and you could show up or you could not show up, or you could just skip the entire semester, show up, and just like fill out the correct answers on the final exam. Um, there's no real, there's things that we do at the end of the semester, but the actual class is taking the class. Um, it's gonna be an experiential journey um, for all of us to explore um, weird tools that are now available to us all cheaply, um, and as well as the living environment that surrounds us all. Um, so, uh, don't think just because, in short, basically just don't think that just because I'm very excited and I like this class and I buy you guys boxes, um, that it's going to be like a pushover class. Um, it's going to be, um, I'm not going to be a, a super hard ass. Um, uh, I'm not going to be like, only 1% of you will even get an A in my class because I want to make it hard or something like that. Um, I'm just going, I'm just letting you know that I'm just not going to let you off from just because. Um, cool. Everyone clear with that? Makes sense. Um, uh, assignments. We're going to assignments. Uh, what time is it? Uh, 1249. 12 we go till 1 30, correct? Cool. Um, so I'm going to try to go through this quick, more quickly. Um, and don't be uh, worry. So one of the main rules in this class is, is fight your fear. <laughs> uh, because there's going to be stuff, you're all, I guarantee you're going to be exposed to things that you've never done or experienced um, or never read or saw. Um, or you're going to be asked to do things that you might be like, mm -hmm. you know. Um, if you have concerns over things, let me know. Um, but uh, don't be fearful just for fear's sake, okay? Um, so our exercises, as I, meant, as I mentioned earlier, um, you're all going to keep a journal throughout the semester. Um, at the end of the semester, you'll like, we'll have you take photos of your um, journal, so we'll have a digital copy of it. Um, and that'll be kind of how you turn in that assignment. Um, I'll also do kind of like spot checks throughout the semester, and just like, mostly just because it's fun, just see what you guys are like up to, and it's all just like, you know, like, hey, can I look through, whoa, that's a cool drawing or diagram or something like that, you can check it out. Um, website, um, four of your journal entries that you do, um, you're going to turn into kind of a blog post uh, about something. It's up to your discretion, whatever you want. Uh, maybe one day you just sat and watched a single caterpillar the entire day and you wrote an amazing blog entry about that. Maybe one day you spend an entire day 
trying to get your program onto the Arduino, for some reason it wasn't working. Um, whatever you want, completely up to you, but you're going to turn four of your um, journal entries into kind of like website blog posts with pictures and stuff like that. So is it one, would it be like one journal entry per blog post or four journal entries per one blog post? Uh, ah, okay. Uh, yeah, it should have been more clear. You're going to make four blog posts on the website. No, no. Yeah, okay. um, reflective exercises, we're going to have different um, exercises that we'll do in class. Uh, basically, these are just going to be like in-class things, like later today, we're going to give you your buckets, and we're going to put this special goop on them that makes it so insects can't crawl up and escape from them. Um, and so that'll be like a, an example of one of our reflective exercises. And we'll talk about the material and other parts of that. Um, bio performances. These are going to be fun. Um, so as it, as it says there, you're going to go into an environment, find something living, experiment and play with it. We're going to do kind of a quick version of one of these um, in class today. Um, and then you're going to script, you're going to make like a set of actions uh, that you're going to do with. So before you're just like there, playing with your millipede, now you're going to say like, okay, every time my millipede turns left, I'm going to pick him up and turn around 180 degrees. And then I'm just going to do that for five minutes uh, and then just see what happens. So that's going to be your, your bio performance. Um, we'll get into more about performance theory and stuff like this in later classes. Um, but, uh, and that kind of, uh, you mentioned again, this, the structure of the class is we'll end up going into lots of different realms, but because we have so many realms, you'll already be like, you already have a couple feet in the water once we like start explaining more about it. So you already have done some bio performances by the day that I get to put up a PowerPoint about performance theory and stuff like this. Um, so don't let that work. Um, then you just basically enact the script, you actually do it, and you document what you did. Um, so we'll have a couple of those throughout the semester. They're just kind of like training exercises to get you engaged with the living world. Um, we'll try to do that with some of our fun animals. An incredibly well-behaved dog. Um, uh, essay, at the very um, end of the semester, you're going to make uh, just a, a formal essay um, about um, your experiences um, and also what factors led to your final design. Um, that'll be about maybe like if you're coming from like an English paper writing thing, uh, students always want to know how many pages. Um, it's let's say five to six pages. Um, so it's not going to be super crazy difficult to do. I wouldn't start you know, worrying about it, but you'll have to cite um, different parts of the theory that we discussed. And we'll get to it more. Just know at the end of the semester, you're going to be writing also. Uh, field trips. We're going to have field trips in this class. How many other classes have field trips? None. Damn. Yeah. Um, so, oh, you got field trips in your class? All right. Um, we're going to try to have field trips. So, uh, you should be responsible for making at least one field trip. Okay? Um, I've even canceled one of the classes in the semester. Uh, so that uh, you can't be like, oh, Andy makes us just go to class and then play in the woods with them all day. We never get any time. Um, so, uh, so I've tried to, I've tried to keep you guys' other schedules and stuff in mind uh, in order for us all to also have fun and go on fun field trips. Uh, examples of things is um, probably late October. I'm going to schedule a camping trip. Um, up at Tuggaloo uh, Park, um, which is kind of in northern Georgia. There's like a lake and stuff like that. So we'll, we'll be out there and we'll do some exercises out there. Um, you can join. There'll be other people from my department there too, um, doing design in the wild. Um, so there'll be things just about how do you get something to run when you're not in a computer lab? You can just plug it into USB. You know, what power issues come up? Um, there's stuff about how you capture um, insects, how do, you, how do you catch a millipede in the wild. Um, I staked out this millipede for three weeks straight. Uh, 
um, how to pitch up well. Um, and uh, so we'll go over all kinds of fun things like that. But and you should you should not just be like, oh man, I went on this one field trip where we foraged for urban fruit, um, uh, and now I'm done. I had a blast, but I've done one. Uh, you are very welcome to do more uh, because we're going to try to arrange lots of these cool trips for you guys. They're going to be amazing learning experiences. Um, one other thing about this class, uh, just to just to let you know, the there's uh, often undergraduates tend to have some difficulties with kind of more free form experiential classes, um, uh, especially um, students I found uh, from my experience on kind of the engineering side of stuff. And a lot of students will be throughout the semester like, oh, you know, the stuff we do is so weird, you know, how do I, how do I get a job when I say I made this frog with this umbrella? Um, you know, how does that lead to a job? Um, so like, here's the secret about the job. You go into, um, you know, let's say, what, what's, what do you think you're going to end up having, like, what are you going to do once you graduate? You can make it. Web design, cool. So let's say he wants to go to the best web design company in the world. Let's say they're called Best Web Co. Um, yeah, he said that. Uh, and so he's got an interview with Best Web Co. Oh man, he's been studying for this interview. It's one of those crazy interviews too, where they make you like take tests and stuff in between. Um, and then later he's chatting with the interview person, and the interview person's like, Oh, cool. And what other you know? You have. Um, there's two different ways the interview usually go. Usually you'd be like, yes, I've made the web pages. And he's like, really? All of our other um, candidates also made web pages. How, how intriguing. This really set your, uh, your application apart. Um, but if you happen to be like, you know, I have these diverse interests. I made websites. And I've also used my website knowledge of the computers medium to bring some of these uh, web skills that I had in coding into the real world. Um, I made a frog with an umbrella. Um, and I'd be like, why did you make a frog with an umbrella? And you'd be like, well, um, Conrad Lorenz, uh, an important animal behavior researcher, mentioned that uh, frogs always need umbrellas. And so I was trying to use his theory. Anyway. Um, Weird, amazing classes. <laughs> I'm pulling myself, sorry. Um, weird classes, we'll just go with weird classes, um, are like awesome for interviews. So uh, it's all about getting as much experience as you can. So don't ever, don't worry that, you know, uh, if you're worried that, like, I need to be, I'm never going to get a job at Best Web Co. Um, if they see me make my frog with my umbrella, just keep in mind that it's probably going to be more so the opposite. Okay? Um, projects. We're going to have three main projects throughout the year. First project, I'm going to do it with you guys. So you almost get a freebie with that. Um, you're going to still have to do it. Um, and then we're going to have a little performance where we actually try to figure out some time to go around at night and wear our costumes and see if there's a lightning bug. Um, but uh, starting next week is when that project will start. We're going to make wearable lightning bug costumes. Um, next project, Stupid Pet Trick. This is going to be where I, I, I let the leash off and you guys start running away free. Uh, and you have to do your own project. Um, you're going to create a very simple cybiotic interface. So, what is this weird word that Andrew just made up? Um, well, it's a word that I found to be very useful because there, this word doesn't, this concept doesn't exist as much as a single word. And that is when you have a digital agent, something that you program to do some sort of set of behaviors, and it can act on, and it can take input from a living creature, a biotic agent. Um, why? Why, what is this term? This term is a biology term for denoting kind of a living entity in general. Sometimes people say like creature, that has this kind of connotation of uh, an actual
actual an animal, um, something that moves around with us. Um, biotic kind of just lets me know that it's a living thing. From any of the kingdoms of life, um, animalia, plants, uh, uh, <laughs> fungi, um, any of those things, protozoan, uh, bacteria. So he brought in lots of bacteria for us today. Um, and uh, so uh, biotic just kind of means a living agent in general. Um, so where does the word psi biotic come from? Well, so psi, like the prefix in cyborg. Um, so a cyborg is a cybernetic organism. Cybernetics is about control systems. Um, it's when you have feedback, which is when you have an input and an output going between two things. Um, and so the organism part is, you know, I'm RoboCop. I have this robot that's interacting with my brain, and so I can shoot bad guys. Um, the reason that we're not calling it like cyborg interaction is because the word cyborg has kind of a lot of these connotations of uh, human, half human things. And we're going to kind of exclusively focus on non human uh, interfaces because they've been very neglected. Um, and they can lead, lead us to find all kinds of interesting weird design uh, criteria. Um, so you're going to make something and your stupid pet trick, project number two, uh, that simply takes a minimum of one input from a creature and does one thing with the creature. So your, your Arduino or whatever you program is going to take one input, one output, minimum. Later, we're going to your final project is we're going to make a full cybiotic experience. So um, it's not just going to be your frog with your robot umbrella. Uh, it's going to be you installing this frog with a robot umbrella in some sort of gallery space where people can interact with it. Or you're going to create a performance where you have a play and the frog with the umbrella is a reactive uh, entity uh, in this play. Uh, anyway, we'll get more to that later. Uh, all you have to do is worry about the main assignments for next week. Uh, this breaks down how much stuff is worth. You can all check out that. Attendance, you totally got to come to class. Like I was saying earlier, the real life assignment of this class is just showing up. You got to come here, be engaged. It's small. I'll know if you're not here. Um, <laughs> there's no real like, you can't be like Hank and just kind of like slink back away. Um, and schedule, I have a schedule here. Um, stuff is probably, it's definitely going to change. Um, your assignments that you have each day are listed over here. Um, the, I've highlighted when projects start and end, green and blue. So projects two gets assigned here, it ends when you see the next big blue bar, uh, and so on and so on. Um, uh, those are the main things that will remain kind of constant. Uh, a lot of the things about like, on, you know, oh, Mr. Quitmeyer, you saw that on, we were supposed to read Animals as Navigators on September 12th, but we read it on September 17th instead. Oh, no. Um, so it'll, it'll probably change. I'll let you know what the assignments are for the next day. Uh, this is kind of give you an overview of what's going to happen. Uh, tonight's syllabus. Okay, cool. And then if your syllabus is like mine, it starts with another syllabus because I stapled two together. But uh, yeah, I think yours are like that. Um, cool. Whew. Okay, that was a lot of things. What time is it? What time? Like, 105. 105. We got half an hour. Um, I'm going to split you guys up into teams of three and four. And you have three minutes to share what your living thing is with each other. Um, and also introduce each other, uh, who you are, where you're from, that kind of thing, okay? So, you guys, you guys. Is that good? <laughs> you already know that. Group up, group up. What now? We're with each other. You're grouping up, you are talking to each other about what your names are, that kind of thing what your animal is, or plant, or fungus, or bacteria. Um, and then uh, I will, and you have two
two minutes and 38 seconds to do this in. Uh, got it? Go. Okay, um, I did you did you bring in? Because um, I know you didn't get the official uh, uh, thing. Yeah. Did you get? Uh, did you bring in any kind of living creature? Okay, that's fine. Okay. That's fine. Uh, and you weren't even on the email link, so you have no living creature. Sorry. I need to. Oh really? Ah, okay. Cool. We're gonna have you present this amazing creature. This is the star of the group. Probably wouldn't be taking a group. Uh, that I found Kyle's garden area. And the roots came out with the two. Uh, I thought I know. It looks like a sad guy because I did, but now I'm kind of like that. What's your name again? I'm Anna. Anna. Cool. Erica. Danielle. Danielle. Danielle talks about yourself. Hi, um, I'm a fourth year computational media major. Cool. And what are you? Third year computational media major. Cool. And awesome. 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 It's crazy. Who would have thought? Okay, great. You have this amazing week. Yeah, totally cool. I really like your week thing. I actually really like. Like honestly, I like how stiff he is, and then the little teeny roots. Yeah, I just kind of ripped it out of the ground. I was like, well, the roots came with it. So. But it looks yeah, really I like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it might paint it or something. Yeah. <laughs> so what are what are some elements? Can I touch your plant? Um, what are some elements about it you thought you were, made it very nice? Well, when I saw it, it was kind of the light was saturated, so it was growing green and purple. Yeah, it's got lots of nice different colors. It's cool. I'm gonna have you join plant group. Okay. Um, so you guys are gonna be all team plant. And you guys are gonna be team half plant, half dog, half bacteria. Yeah. Um, so now that you all know each other and are the best of friends, um, you're going to look at your biotic agents and you're going to think about um, one, an interesting thing about it, like how he just said, he really liked the color gradations on it. So you're going to pick an interesting thing about it, and then you're going to have three minutes to come up with a short 30 second play um, where your thing is an actor in the play with you. And the play is either going to be a war story, um, where there's a war, or it's going to be a love story um, where there's love. Now keep in mind, a love story, for it to be a love story, there always has to be unrequited love. Um, there has to be something in between that love and its accomplishment. So, everybody got that? Your That's first weird assignment. Yeah, so you four, Team Plante, are all working together, and you three are all working together. Okay, start. Do you guys want so, to so a love interesting. story or a story? Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Well, let's talk about characteristics that are super interesting to me. So, Mark? Wait, you know what's interesting is that he's like yeah, half purple, half green. <laughs> so what if it's an outcast story? Or should it still be Romeo and Juliet? No, it's totally an outcast. Okay, so an outcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's just in character, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I thought it was interesting that it kind of ripped the whole thing out of the ground so easily. Like, all the roots came with it. All that stuff. Okay. Um, and I like the shape of it. What did you think you can experience? Oh, yeah. I don't mean to like talk a lot. I'm sorry, but I just get excited about ideas. So if he, if this one like, so he's the outcast because of appearance, but she's the outcast because she's like not really attached to her family and she's uh, <laughs> uprooted and left. Yeah. So yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. So what was the interaction story like between? Oh. 
Okay, just choose okay, one. Yeah. Putting, uh, so, what, uh, what is the biggest? Purple Christmas Day. Purple Christmas Day. Cool. And so now, so like yeah, one is your <laughs> dog does, and then, and then I think of a 30 second flight <laughs> involving a human. The two F cats are drawn to each other. Yeah. yeah. Go for it. They go where did they go. <laughs> See, <laughs> this person has like an established family, and the family does not like the purple one. But then, yeah. Okay. But she, so then she uppers. Well, you hate the two that are the dog color. She and used to and say, ah, uh, look at it.
how you can create more and more involvement with uh, your creatures. Okay, cool. Excellent job. High five. High five. Cool. All right, let's see. Our war story. Pretty war story. It's great, right? Everything's going to turn out better than expected in this class. <laughs> yes. Okay, so as you guys can tell, she's very anxious because we're the government and we're after her um, because she's a mutt and we need to know her identification. But, but she doesn't want to be identified and she doesn't want to be watched and so she eats her tags all the time and runs around but she can never escape because she's got a microchip inside of her. So no matter how she tries to get away, she'll never be able to escape the government's idea of her. Okay, so we have, that's the rising action. What's our climax? You gotta give us the full story. Uh, so, we captured her oh, last cap week, captured but her. she ran Show away. Us. Show us. Capture her. Yeah, capture her. She, she won't do anything. Oh, she's captured. <laughs> oh, man, look at her. Um, but she doesn't have her tag with her chip on her. Oh, so no. now yeah. we have to do extensive surgery to find this chip. Um, and she find out the government's not a bad thing, apparently, because she's looking. Uh, and so <laughs> and she, she's compliant. She learns to love Big Brother. Yeah. Um, okay. And then Interesting one. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's peace and love in the end. Wow. Beautiful. Thank you. Oh, nice bow, Maddie. Awesome. Thank you very much. This was excellent. Excellent. Oh. Um, cool. So again, let's do like uh, another like 20 second uh, reflection. Um, what are some things like, let's say we had a whole year to really flesh out the epic saga of someone wanting to avoid the evil government and all their tracking um, of our the dog's daily identity. Um, what are some things involved in this narrative arc, some elements that the dog could interact with or express itself? And just throw out ideas. Oh, yeah, the dream dog. What? Did you have a year instead of 30 second mm. I like that uh, you guys kind of determined the outcome of how she reacted to the government by literally how she reacted to the government. Yeah, that was nice. That was nice. Yeah, you could have a like yeah. You could have a. Uh, and that's one of the kind of cool things about having um, any kind of uh, living component to you know your performance or your interactive device. There's always this element of chaos, so it can leave things very open ended to like. The frog, his umbrella's closed for the past three weeks. What's going on with this crazy frog and his umbrella? I don't know why a frog with an umbrella <laughs> that's motorized became my like de facto go-to uh, example of a cybiotic media artifact, but it's there, so we'll keep going with that. But yeah, so exactly. So the dog itself can help determine the course of how a particular instance of the play will go. Super cool. Um, Real quick, we're going to start wrapping things up. I have, um, now that you've been exposed to the class a little bit, I've made you go up and play with dogs and plants, um, I have a little list of course concerns. Um, so if you have concerns about the class, um, such as uh, your instructor didn't print enough things, um, that could be a concern. Mostly what I want you to write down is, uh, can I use this just to show? Um, I want you to list any allergies you might have, like I'm allergic to dogs or something like that. Um, so then us as a class can be more cognizant of like, oh, uh, uh, Erica is mortally terrified of spiders. Maybe I won't bring a handful of spiders in this class. Maybe I'll have them locked up very securely or something like that. Um, so if you have any phobias or allergies, um, or if there's something you can think of that like will just severely offend you. And so you can answer these. You can, uh, if I don't have a sheet for you, uh, you can write this down, or we can also fill them out uh, next class. Maybe that's what I'm gonna do. Um, you can, if, unless you've already finished it, uh, started working on it now, uh, you can fill it out now. 
I'll have these again next class, and you can think about it. Uh, so you don't rush your like, oh, I am allergic to dogs, and every time I see a dog, I die. Um, so, so make sure, you know, think about those kind of things. The goal of the class, um, like I say um, here, is we want to respect each other as much as we can um, and try to deal with any kind of concerns uh, anyone else may have with the class so that we can have a really amazing good time, okay? Cool. So I'll bring this again to class uh, next Thursday and we'll deal with them. So I have one more and we want to just whip it out. Cool. Uh, last thing to deal with in the class before we go on our micro field trip is, remember when your instructor said that he would provide all the text for you? It's so true. He even made these ones for you. So this is your very first um, reading assignment. And this isn't due till next week. So your real assignment for Thursday is basically flip through it and look at the pretty pictures. I put pretty pictures in there. By next week, you're going to have to look at all these crazy squiggles that make sentences <laughs> and words. Um, so, uh, so I'm going to give you all one of these books. Um, there, I was going to make you guys actually have to sew them yourselves, but it was hard to bring the sewing machine all the way across campus, um, so I sewed them for you. Um, but I really want you guys to have to do it. But just because I'm, I'm a real hard, hard jerk, um, I'm going to make you have to get scissors and snip off the uh, little loose end. So they have a little end. You're also going to have to fold it yourself. Oh, jeez. Um, so these are, when I was down in the jungle, and I would meet different scientists or artists or explorers, um, and they're like, Andy, what do you do? Well, it gets hard to have to sit down for an hour and a half and kind of rant about this weird field that I've made. Um, and instead, I... I was worried like the syllabus as I uh, put two of them together. Um, but no, that should be good. So yeah, I just fold it in half. So I made these little field guides. Um, and I have one that explains what my actual PhD is, and I'll give that one to you guys later. But right now, this is the inspiration field guide, where you can see um, all kinds of different works that are maybe symbiotic works themselves, such as these pigeons that controlled uh, missiles um, that were developed in World War II. They put pigeons inside missiles to guide them to places. So, you know, like homing pigeons are like, oh, you know, that's where I live. So they train pigeons to go to a certain place. And then they actually have a set of three pigeons uh, to make sure that it's uh, redundantly accurate. And the pigeons peck on the little window to guide the missile where to go, and then it blows things up. It's crazy. Um, or a cockroach-controlled robot, um, all kinds of cool stuff. Um, so I, I would give people these booklets, and then when they're out doing their work in the field, in the middle of the jungle, and they're having their lunch break, it's bound nice and securely so that they can uh, just toss it in their field pack and not have to worry about it falling apart because a staple came out or whatever. Um, and then they can just kind of look through it at their own leisure and kind of get like, this is what Andy does. or like. Oh, I really want to make a project like this Venus flytrap thing that goes around a plant or something like that. Um, and then mix it with this other thing. Um, so anyway, so these are yours to keep and cherish and then read over uh, the next week. Uh, they're made by hand. You might want to snip off the strings. Uh, and then on top of that, what time we got? One twenty-five. Okay. Um, ah. Oh, are you in this class after us, Hank? Yeah, yeah. Cool. One thirty-five. These guys are very yeah. ambitious. Yeah. So cool. Yeah, we're gonna be. Yeah. That's cool. Um. Anyway. Uh. So we have all that. Um. I'm gonna go. We're gonna go on a quick field trip right now. Uh, so you can grab all your stuff. I'm going to show you where my office is. Um, and then we're also going to bring some of our equipment. So you guys are super lucky. Remember how you only have to buy such little stuff? 
Um, you might want to mark down what the assignments are for next Thursday, or for Thursday. Um, but remember how um, you're only going to have to buy an Arduino, and an AC Tiny Programmer, and a journal, um, and, those are, and a breadboard. Uh, in the past, you have to like buy like a soldering iron, and like snips, and like special solder, and all this extra stuff. Um, but instead, we managed to get this awesome grant where we have these amazing um, prototyping equipment uh, racks that you guys will all be able to use as part of this class. And so what we have to do, though, is go get them. Uh, so we're going to go grab these things and bring them back over here. Uh, you do not need to bring your living creature back Thursday, but you can. <laughs> They were supposed to discover it. I know. Hey, didn't see you. I'm going to get on the right back. We're going to be right back with that. Yeah, I think more, this is like the last one I need to be right around here. All right. I didn't see that. Are you guys having access? Yeah, leave it. I don't have access. Do they have access? Would you have interaction to sign in? Huh? Yeah. Interaction to sign in. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah.
very important in the book. It's going to go like
Very nice little fun chat. Uh, I think we got a few more. So good. Yeah, me it's good. Oh, anyone too? Thank you. Everyone up with a solo? Perfect. Okay. Great. Welcome all. Um, I'm Andy. Uh, my name is Andrew Pittmeyer. And this is my very first class ever. Um, so it's special. Um, and it's also special because uh, they're letting us kind of do an experimental class. Um, instead of the traditional uh, interaction design class that Carl's teaching, Carl Gustavo is teaching a section of it, um, also in case um, anyone is like, I've got to get out of here. Um, you can try to sign up for his class instead. That's a lot more um, kind of web-oriented and stuff like that. The focus of this class is going to be kind of a new wave of interaction design where we bring computers into the real world. Um, so the goal is going to be looking at lots of prototyping platforms that deal with sensors, things that can take in information from the environment, um, processors and actors, things that take in this information and then like manipulate it, um, perform different functions on it, come up with some sort of semantic notions of what's happening in that world, and then actors, um, things that make stuff happen in the environment. So like a sensor, maybe like a water temperature sensor. You put this thing into an aquarium, and it sees how hot or cold it is. Um, then you can hook this up to a little microprocessor. Um, we have Arduinos, they're these little tiny computers um, that can think about it. And maybe our, our um, microprocessor, whenever it sees that it's 78 degrees in the aquarium, then it wants to do something. And so whenever it's 78 degrees, then it talks to the servo. You know what a servo is? It's a little uh, kind of motorized thing that you can make move around and go to a certain degree. Um, and maybe, so once it hits 78 degrees, our community goes, servo, go. And then it starts swirling all the water in your aquarium. Um, so some sort of weird system like that. Um, but that's going to be kind of the focus. Um, things that can take in stuff from the world and act back into the world. Um, uh, so, um, we're going to go through our syllabus together today. Um, then we're going to kind of, I'm going to give you kind of an overview of how the class is going to work. Um, talk to you about some of the things I have planned in store. Then we're going to have a little break. We're going to start talking about all the cool creatures that you brought in. Um, and we're going to think about what we can do with the creatures. And then um, we're going to go on this tiny field trip uh, to show you all the amazing equipment that we got for you. Um, and then um, we'll have like questions and stuff, but the class will probably be over by then. Um, so, uh, very first thing, looking at it. Uh, my contact information's up here. Uh, one thing for you guys to do, um, you can do right now, is write down my phone number. Um, so, and you can also write it down and memorize it. It is 304-4-MAYHEM. So, I can give you the actual numbers in a second, but this will help you remember it. So, let's say you're in the lab or something, and you're soldering something, and this isn't going to happen, but suddenly uh, your soldering iron explodes and half the room's on fire. First number to call is 911. Um, second number to call would be me, 304 4 Mayhem. So if Mayhem starts happening, uh, give me a call. Um, and I can try to come over and help things out. It can also be like slightly less Mayhem. Like, <laughs> um, I have a bunch of these ants but I forgot to put flu on on their cage. We'll discuss this in a second. And now the ants are everywhere. Um, how do I collect them back into my box or something like that? Anyway, good day at my phone number. Um, you have the rest of my contact information there too. Um, email me is probably the best way you can reach me. Um, I'm often available uh, through email. Uh, I have two sets of office hours. Um, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 
I'll have an hour after class, um, so just right after class then. I'll be around here. There's also an office, um, 326. Um, yes, 326 is right down that hallway. You'll see it, it's got my face on it. Um, and then I also have a desk over in TSRB. Um, do you guys know where TSRB is? Yes, yes, no. Who, who doesn't know? Raise your hand. I'm not sure. Yes, so, so TSRB, do you know where Moe's is? Yeah. Um, oh, it's like, the building above it? It's the building above it, okay. yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> cool. Uh, but if you go up there on the third floor, um, there's the digital media department. Um, and, oh, by the way, I'm a, I'm a digital media student um, over at uh, the digital media department. I'm uh, uh, going on my third year of PhD research into what I call digital naturalism. Um, which is about basically building engagements um, with the real living world and the animals inside of it um, through using digital technology. So that's where I come from. We're going to go over a lot more of like the kind of theory and stuff uh, later on Thursday. Um, so don't worry if I, if I tend to be going too fast for you or anything. It's going to be our fun, loose day where we also just kind of get an idea of all like the basic stuff. Um, cool. We have a course website. Um, if you go there, uh, you can see some basic things that I've tossed up, like the syllabus. Um, there's a T-Square site, too, and that's where I'll give you guys all the textbooks and stuff like that. Um, and then this is also a place where you guys will be putting some of your posts um, and documenting some of your own projects on. Um, and so we'll get to that. Uh, you can see on the next page of the syllabus, it has login information for how to get onto the, uh, the class website and stuff like that. Um, so, uh, I'm going to skip right to required text. So, you guys have other classes, right? And they're like, you have to, what's the most expensive textbook you've had to buy for a class? 120? Bio. Uh, I had to buy a bio textbook one for 280 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. With, uh, they get expensive. Luckily for you guys, um, I will provide you with all the texts um, that you'll need for the class totally for free. Um, so I'll scan things for you. I'll put in a lot of work for you guys. <laughs> um, so I'll, put in, I'll scan all these texts, I'll give them to you. Um, you can download them from T-Square, I'll let you know when they're up there. Um, and yeah, so that's the cool thing uh, in terms of your wallet. Now that your wallet's all free from horrible textbook prices, now you can spend that money on something cool. So um, because we have to deal with the physical real world, we're going to need to buy physical real things. Like there's going to be a part in this semester probably where you're going to have to like buy a sheet of wood. Um, and you're gonna be like, man, I need, I need to make this box so that my animals can pop from one box to another. I gotta, I can't just download it. I gotta just, I gotta make it. I gotta go to like Home Depot, and like buy wood. Um, and so you should schedule um, for yourselves um, this magical textbook money that's been freed up, and you should plan over the semester probably spend around hundred to two hundred dollars on materials. Um, there's only a couple required materials that you will absolutely, absolutely, absolutely have to have. Um, and starting from the top, the simplest thing is you're going to need a journal. So um, I'll give you guys a full journal speech in a little bit here. But um, what you want is for our class, you're going to have a, a, an experience journal. Um, twice a week, minimum, um, you're going to have to write down uh, a page in your journal, about this size, handwritten. It can include drawings, it can include text, preferably some sort of combination of both. Um, this is very important. Uh, this helps you uh, get
get out a lot of your ideas um, and then reflect on these ideas in ways that you can quickly reference. Even because I know this happens with me a ton, I have to force myself to journal. Um, that'll be like, oh, I'll remember that. And then I'm just like, oh, I had this great idea for some sort of you know cockroach thing and there was some sort of magical component and now I can't remember it. Um, or, you know, I woke up in the middle of the night and I'm like, oh yeah, you know, I wrote it down. And the next day I look at my journal, whoa, what was that? Oh, this is a great idea. Um, it's also good too because um, uh, basically the more, uh, the more communication practice you get, um, even kind of with yourself, uh, the better and the more able you'll be able to express your ideas. So that's kind of one of the main goals of this class is because um, it's a very theory and practice driven class. Um, so you're not just going to be sitting here hammering away and then at the end of the class you'll churn out like, here's my thing. Um, you're gonna have to churn out your thing. People are gonna be like, why do you have a frog with an umbrella that opens whenever the sun comes up? What's going on here? Um, so then you can't just be like, thing, got it. Um, you're going to have to communicate why you made the design decision that you did. Um, the entire point, so this is an interaction design class. The entire point of design is to make meaningful choices about things that you do and then be able to discuss why those choices were made. Um, so you're going to need to talk about it. And the more that you reflect and kind of iteratively think about the stuff that you're doing and encountering in your everyday life, um, the better um, it'll be. Uh, the journal is also great too uh, for just kind of keeping track of when things happen. So uh, your very first assignment, um, who, does anyone have a journal already, a dedicated class journal? Yeah, you're gonna have to have a dedicated class journal. Uh, it's it's ultimately going to be up to you. Um, so let me give you another little foray into uh, where I come from. Uh, so this will, I'll, this will be like a, an interesting kind of narrative. I'll keep giving you guys like little little bits of information about who I am or what's going on at the time. Um, so I uh, do research with field biologists, um, primarily in um, Panama. And so I spent the summer down in Panama working with people out of uh, the Smithsonian. I was a fellow with the Smithsonian. And I work with people who study animal behavior, different types of animals. And my focus was to see how we can use digital media less as just a tool or because uh, right now they pretty much just use it as a tool. Like my bat swoops down. I want to know how many times it swoops down every day. Um, give me a number. Um, so it's kind of just like just a tool. And so what I'm looking into is how we can use digital media to explore new behaviors that we could not really notice otherwise. So maybe the bat swoops down, but then maybe we make a frog call happen right whenever it swoops. How does it, does it change its uh, course? Uh, and what if, it, what if the frog call happens um, only every other swoop. So does it learn these kind of things? Are there things that we can only, um, experiences we can create for animals that we can only precisely do with some sort of digital media? And that's one half of my research. And the other half of my research is about um, outreach. So, um, great, you found that bats are actually the most intelligent creatures on Earth um, and they can talk to each other and a very sophisticated Morse code. Um, you have all this amazing research that you do. Usually what happens with biologists is then you just write down a journal article, you publish it, and then certain groups of scientists who have access to these journal articles read it, and that's usually kind of where it stops. What I'm looking into is how um, we can use these uh, mixed devices, hybrid between the digital world, the physical world, and the living world, um, as kind of performative tools. And we can have these performances or interactive installations um, that we can set up with the creatures 
so that someone doesn't just read that, oh, bats are the smartest because they can swoop four times in a row. Um, uh, but instead, they can go and experience it. They can somehow uh, engage with the bat in ways that they weren't able to before. So um, doing this, um, I encounter a lot of like tips and tricks studying methodologies of um, field biologists and what they have to do with in dealing with the scientific process, in dealing with harsh elements, um, in dealing with all kinds of stuff they have to deal with. And one of the things, um, we're talking about a super great, is your journal. So here's going to be the journal spiel that I got from a really great guy named Barrett Klein, um, who studies ants and bees. So here's what you want out of your journal. Um, your journal is going to be your buddy who's going to be with you as often as you can, and you're going to just include observations, data, um, diagrams, everything you can get um, you want to put in your journal. Um, one thing that's good to have about your journal is acid-free pages, because you're going to uh, keep this for a while, even if at the end of the class you're like, oh, man, these classes are the worst, I'm throwing it away. Um, within about, that'll be about, you know, four or five months from now. Um, even within that time, um, certain like, just like, I don't know if these are acid free or not, but your, your stuff can kind of fade and stuff like that. You want your, you want your notes to be pretty. Um, because you might have to refer to them. And when you have to document your project, as we will all do in our class, um, you're going to show kind of a full documentation. So maybe, you make this amazing frog with an umbrella installation and it gets put on display at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Uh, people are like, oh, oh, this is amazing. Um, we're going to want to have the full documentation at the end of the semester about how you even came up with the frog with the umbrella. Maybe earlier it was a frog with a parasol. Interesting. Uh, but uh, so we're, we're going to want to see your entire process of how you got there. Um, because it's good for you guys to learn, and then it's good for other people um, who've never done these kind of uh, design or experience, who may be just looking at the class or using the class to, uh, or publications to kind of see how to build their own frogs and parasols. Um, it'll be good to see all the design choices that you make. Um, so, uh, acid-free paper is good to keep all your, all your notes looking good, so later we can take pictures of them and then publish it with your documentation. What's up, Hank? Can you just leave this open? Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it sounds good. Okay, thanks. I just don't have access yet. Okay, cool. Um, second thing is you guys are going to want an indelible source of ink. Let me see what happens. There it is. Um, so there's a lot of um, markers and stuff that uh, I'm writing, and I'm keeping all my notes, and I'm out in the woods, and then suddenly it starts raining, and my page gets wet, and I get a drop of water, and suddenly my diagram goes from a nice, super beautiful square shape to this big exploded ball of rainbow, which looks pretty cool, but um, makes your notes kind of harder to read. So you're going to want um, some sort of nice uh, ink that says that it's waterproof. Um, most ballpoint pens are good for that. Uh, they also don't smudge. Um, I tend to use these little micron pens, um, which are pretty nice. Uh, they give me these different colors you can use too. Um, so it's all super cool. Uh, one thing to do, uh, whenever you write an entry in your journal, uh, put down a date. Uh, because even though you'd be like, oh, I don't remember that, I wrote that last Tuesday. Um, six months from now, you probably won't. And it might not be important, but it might end up being somewhat important um, to know when you had certain thoughts or ideas or things like that. And it makes it easy to reference, because um, sometimes things get out of order, or the chronology is weird, or you're referencing something that happened. Um, it's just a really good idea. Uh, so those are the main things. I tend to choose uh, a nice journal. You want one about this size, because you want to be able to do drawings in it, too. Um, if it's much smaller than that, you might not be able to draw a detailed drawing that you can also add labels to. Um, so this is probably a pretty good size. Uh, I choose without the lines, again, for the, the drawings. 
Um, some people recommend hardbound journals, um, but I kind of like the, the spiral bound because often uh, some of the hardbound ones, if it's rough and I keep throwing it down, um, the binding can actually break and my pages all fall out. And I'm like, ah, and it's really annoying. So I tend to like a nice spiral bound. Um, works out well for me. And then, uh, that's pretty much it. I gave uh, on the, there's a, a link to one on the syllabus uh, that I think looks pretty decent. These are all these Strathmore uh, little notebooks. You can find them in Michael's Strathmore Mixed Media. Um, they're about six bucks or something. Uh, they're pretty nice. They One thing that I also like is they have these really thick pages um, because I'm kind of like a big clumsy dude. And so I'm all like, meh, meh. And with like other journals, I tend to just rip pages in half or out sometimes. So that's always been really nice for me. So this is number one uh, get a journal. Try to have one by next class period, okay? That's a. Uh, I'm going to list her assignments for class. Look, we have a chalkboard. Have you guys had a chalkboard in a while? I haven't. It feels great. Assignment. There's an end there. Okay. So, journal. Cool. The next thing that you're going to need for this class is a prototyping class. Um, you're going to have all these wires and little computers and bugs and stuff. And you're also going to yeah, want to capture and collect some of your creatures. Um, and so I went, out of the kindness of my heart, I went and bought you guys all these nice boxes. Um, so you don't even have to worry about it. I bought it for you guys. And uh, so you can put your critters in there. You can put electronics in there. This guy right here is Conrad Millipede. Uh, he's very nice and a little sleepy right now, but sometimes he goes trucking around all over the place. Um, I found him last weekend and I made him, he's going to be one of our class pets. Uh, so you guys can play with him if you want. There he goes. He's around, he eats oats and uh, lettuce and carrots. Um, and he's pretty cool. So, yeah, so he'll be in this class. Uh, and you guys, if you need like, a, oh man, I really want to play with an animal and do some sort of interaction, quick iterations on something, you can play with a comrade here. He'll be available for you. Also, I have some ants too for you. And we'll, we'll talk about this later. Um, cool. But so this is your. This is going to be. Uh, I have a bunch of these. We'll go over and get them later. Uh, but uh, I got you guys a bunch of these prototyping boxes. Uh, soon you'll be like, oh man, Andy, amazing. Faces are going to be really lit up by like, oh, these boxes are great because um, they'll come in handy. So uh, don't worry about the box. Um, the next thing you're going to need is an electronics breadboard. You guys know what breadboards are? Um, I will. Uh, I would say a full size one. I'll include a link to, to one later. Um, a breadboard is a thing that makes prototyping with electronics very simple. Um, with has anyone anyone ever used and um, what's uh okay so we're gonna start from from here to here is your electronics experience. So everyone give me a hand somewhere between like I've flipped a light switch in my life um, to like I've built my own computer out of just copper. <laughs> I just mined my own copper and then smelted it and then turned it into a computer. So, so somewhere around there. Okay. Cool. Free low. Where you at? Free low. So, um, in terms of electronics, have you guys ever seen. Um, big comrade. I need to gesture. I need to gesture too wildly. Um, have you ever seen uh, an electronic thing that has these wires? Um, so they send electricity through them. And when you want to send messages or communicate um, stuff with electronics, usually try to hook wires up to other wires. A breadboard is this nice little thing 
where you can just plug wires in. You're kind of like a telephone operator, and you plug them into other wires. And you don't have to like take molten solder and glue wires together all the time to do stuff. Um, so we'll get one of those. I'll send you a link to show you what they look like. The next thing that we're going to need is kind of maybe being distracted. Uh, the next thing we're going to need, and this is going to be kind of the crux of the class. Um, it's not another living creature, um, but it's a new type of medium that emulates life. I would call it the behavioral medium, um, and that is the digital medium. But uh, this is a microcontroller, an Arduino. Who here has heard of an Arduino? Hands up, hands down. Cool. So we have one that's never even heard of an Arduino. This is awesome. So. Um, you know what a computer is? Awesome. So, this is just a computer that also has a body. Um, and so, I guess these computers have bodies too. They're all embodied in some sort of way. But these have kind of meta bodies that we can construct uh, the body for. So it has all these ports that we can plug wires in and take information from the world and then process it. So here's a little computer right there and then send the information back out. This is an Arduino Uno. Um, who's seen this before? Okay. Um, who's seen an Arduino Tiny? Ah, a little bit. So this is actually where we're going to start. These are brand new, and they're really getting the basics of like electronics and all kinds of stuff. These will factor into our very first assignment, where we're going to make firefly costumes that let us talk to fireflies. Um, it's going to be a fun class. <laughs> uh, so this right here is even more basic of a little computer than this Arduino Uno is. This is an 80 cent computer um, that has an 8 megahertz clock. And you see these little legs um, there? So the black part is basically its brain. That's where it can think about and do stuff. And the legs are kind of its body. So there's a leg, there's two legs that can take in input from the world. There's actually three legs that can take in input from the world. And there's two legs that can send stuff back out to the world. They can make lights blink. They can make motors spin. Um, they can make flex arms flex. Uh, they can do all kinds of stuff. Um, and these are really cool. They, um, unlike this Arduino, this guy's got like a plug me into a computer kind of thing, right? Um, this guy, how do I get this into a computer? Oh, it's hard. Um, so to get this guy to talk to the computer, um, you get this little like stick of gum thing. Uh, this guy named David Mellis from uh, the Media Lab uh, made. And um, uh, there's a link on here to where to buy those. It's about 15 bucks. Um, and this, lets you plug in all these little brains, and then you can program them. Then you can hook these into circuitry that you made, such as your firefly costume, uh, and you can program them to do different things. So we'll have uh, male fireflies, which have a certain blinking pattern, but then suddenly you're like, oh, I hate being a dude. I want to see what it's like to be a lady firefly. So then we just program a, a new brain, plug it into our costume, and we can see what it's like to have the female experience. Um, so, so we're going to be exploring these two, um, and these are called ET Tiny. Um, they're very small. They're very cheap. I'm going to buy you guys. Again, out of the goodness of my incredibly expansive heart, um, I'm going to buy you guys these little uh, chips that we'll play with. You don't have to worry about purchasing all these. Um, all you have to do is worry about purchasing uh, an Arduino Uno of your very own and an AT Tiny programmer. Okay, stick them up there. Uh, cool. So, does that sound doable? Is anyone like terribly worried like, you know, they spent their last coin on the bus to get over here today and like the class is just going to break them? Uh, cool, does it sound doable to buy? This is about $20, 20 25 This is about $15. Um, your journal is about $6. 
your box. How much does your box cost? Three. Um, and then a breadboard, maybe around six to ten dollars. Um, so we're not talking crazy money yet. Um, later, when you guys are like, I want my frog to have an umbrella that covers all of Georgia that can't. Then we'll have to start like looking into tarp manufacturers and uh, getting like estimates for you know how many square footage of umbrella material we need to make this huge umbrella. Um, and so then things you know we'll have to deal with costs like those when they come up. Uh, but it, it'll it'll work out. <laughs> um, cool. Yeah. 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 Does anybody have an Arduino already? Two people. Cool. Does anyone have an AT Tiny programmer already? No. Okay. Uh, Redboard. instructor account and buy a bunch of these Arduinos, I think I get 15% off. So it covers shipping. Um, and so it might make it cheaper for you guys. Um, I mean, it'll probably make it, it'll definitely make it cheaper for you guys. Um, and so then I can buy all these and then give them to you probably next week with one more week. Um, so if you want to do that, I'll have a sign up sheet and you can let me know what to order and how many things to order. Um, Cool. Next thing up, uh, website. Uh, we talked about that a little bit. Uh, your oh, you so much home. Crazy. Uh, your assignment is look at website. I'm not even saying click on all the links. I'm just saying just go there. Just type this in once, so that maybe then you can actually like oh is that website? It'll be in your like browser bar. Okay. Just look at website. website. Cool. Uh, later, you're going to be logging in. Your username. What's your username when you log in here? Student. Now, student. student. Nice, because you guys are students. What is the password? Cybiotic. One. Nice. Okay. So, and we got to the point where people are like, oh, this, this weird word that Andy made up. Um, or should we hold off for that? What's cybiotic mean? I don't think we're weird out enough yet. Um, so we're going to keep going. We'll get to that in a bit. Okay, so grading. Uh, here's the thing. Uh, this class is going to be, it's going to push you a lot. Um, and so, like, right now, even though I, my goal for the class is to be a helpful as I can um, and to help you guys learn all kinds of neat information and neat practices and neat ways of doing stuff. Um, and as you may be able to tell, I'm very excited about the course. Um, but I also um, am going to have to be very kind of rigorous um, about the class. Uh, so uh, it's not just going to be like, and he really likes, you brought a bug, um, and now you said an Arduino.